Okay, so let's see if you know enough about triangles to solve this problem. Now, what is the situation? Well, we have a big triangle, and inside of the big triangle, we have a small triangle, and we're actually trying to uh, determine this length on the smaller triangle inside of the big triangle. We'll call that length x. So that's what you're trying to figure out in this particular problem. But we have some information here. So the height of the big triangle is 9, and the height of the small triangle is 6, and this distance right here is 4. Now, this is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 6.5, B is 7, C is 8, and D is 9.3. Once again, we're trying to determine this distance right here. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second, and of course, I will solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, now, uh, once again, here is our situation. We have these two triangles, and we want to take note of what type of triangles we're dealing with. Now, hopefully you're saying, oh, I know what type of triangles these are, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, that is fantastic. Now, let's take a look at the answer. Then, of course, we'll get into the uh, solution. But the correct answer here is C, which is A. All right. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of similar right triangles. All right, now this is a big topic that you study in geometry, and if you never heard of similarity, well, this is gonna be a nice kind of introduction to the concept, it's not that difficult, but uh, in kind of a real basic sense, similarity is effectively, if we look at this triangle and this triangle, they appear to be basically the same triangle, just that the bigger triangle is like a zoomed out version uh, or an expanded version of the smaller triangle. Well, this concept of basically the same shape but different sizes, so if I have this box and here is a kind of a larger version of it, but we have the same angles and all the sides are in proportion, well, this concept is called uh, similarity versus the concept of having exactly uh, two uh, figures that are exactly the same size, shape, and everything else. That's called congruent. All right, so that's what we're dealing with in this particular problem. And this is not that difficult, but let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the problem here. And we're dealing with right triangles, right? So some of you might be saying, oh, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know a lot about right triangles, and that's wonderful. They're like, I'm going to start thinking about the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And that would be uh, fantastic, but we really don't have enough information to use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out uh, this problem because a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. Matter of fact, let me write this up here again. This is uh, basically the relationship between the sides of a right triangle. So let's suppose this side right here of this triangle was, I don't know, let's say four, and this side was three. We can figure out the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, by using the Pythagorean theorem. So basically, C is always the longest side of a right triangle. That's called the hypotenuse. So we could solve for this by just plugging these numbers in. So this would be 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. So we get 9 plus uh, 16 is equal to C squared. I'm kind of sloppy here. I'm trying to uh, squeeze this in. But we have C squared is equal to 25. We take the uh, square root of both sides, we get c is equal to positive and negative 5, but we're talking about distance here, so c is equal to 5. So that would be the, the length of this side of this right triangle, the hypotenuse. But in order to solve uh, a, a right triangle problem with the uh, Pythagorean theorem, you need two out of the three sides. Okay, So here, uh, what we're looking at is we, do, we don't have this information and we don't have this information. We only have this side. And if you look at the big triangle, we have this side, but we don't have the hypotenuse, and we don't have this side as well. So what are we supposed to do? 
Well, if some of you might be saying, I know what I'm going to do, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I'm just going to take a guess. Well, that's exactly what you should do. So uh, let's just look at the problem and, you know, kind of think about it. You know, if you're saying, ah, oh, this, this, is, this is six and this side looks longer than six. I don't know. Maybe this is like seven or maybe this is 9.3. Uh, if you're thinking in those terms, I think that's excellent. So, you know, obviously you want to take a guess, but these are wrong. Uh, and the correct answer is eight. So the only way to really figure this out is to actually know the math. Okay, so once again, we're dealing with this concept of similar right uh, triangles. And this is a big topic in geometry. So I can't possibly uh, teach you everything about similar similarity in this particular video, but I think you'll get the main concepts if you've never seen this before. All right, so let's get into the solution right now. Okay, so here is our problem. We want to find the value of x. That's another way we could kind of phrase this question. Now, of course, I explained the problem because I didn't want anyone out there to be uh, lost. But uh, here is a triangle. We have uh, a, a triangle in, inside of the bigger triangle, and they're both right triangles. And we're looking for this distance x. Okay, so what can we do? Well, we already discussed that we really can't use the Pythagorean theorem, so we need another strategy, and that is going to be used. Uh, uh, that is going to be using the concepts of similar right triangles or similarity. Okay, so similar right triangles. Again, this concept of similarity is uh, well. Here is the notation for it. So if I have this triangle and this triangle, and they're similar to one another. You have this little squiggly line right here. Oftentimes, this is the same. Well, not oftentimes. You'll see this when uh, we're trying to say something is approximately a particular value. So if something is approximately 3 in math, we could put that little squiggly line 3. Okay. And so this notation has various notations. It also, I believe, uh, is not as well, N-O-T. But in geometry, when you see this, we're talking about similarity. And again, similarity is basically if you take a figure and let's say you copy it, let's say you're on your uh, computer and you're going to uh, just, you know, select the copy it, a uh, copy function, you paste it and then you expand this to make it larger or smaller, the uh, larger figure or the smaller figure as compared to the other figure, it, those two figures are similar. OK, if you make an exact copy uh, of it, so in other words, it's the same size and shape that's congruent, right? Again, this is the notation for congruency. So congruency is a big topic in geometry, but uh, so is similarity. All right, so we're dealing with uh, two similar right triangles. So basically this triangle here and this triangle here are the exact same uh, proportion. And that is the key idea when it comes to similar figures, right? Basically, the sides are in proportion. So you have the same angles. So I'm just kind of sketching this out this way. So here is our right angles. The angles are the same in similar figures, but the sides are in proportion. Okay, and that is going to be the key in order for us to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and see how this is going to be set up. So what we want to do is actually break this uh, problem up into two distinct triangles. Okay, so this is the uh, kind of the strategy that you want to take. So some of you can actually see, oh, here's a separate triangle and here's the bigger triangle, but let's go ahead and just break this out. We'll draw this kind of, or sketch this out uh, separately from the bigger triangle so we can see exactly what's going on here between the sides. Okay, so the smaller triangle is going to have six and X as its sides, and then the bigger triangle is going to have nine, and then what's this length going to be? Well, that's going to be X plus four. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So here is our two similar right triangles. All right, so the uh, smaller triangle has 6 and x. And again, we're looking for this distance right here, x. And the bigger triangle is 9 and x plus 4. Okay, so these sides are in proportion. In other words, the, the proportion from um, this side to this side is equal to the proportion of this and this, or the ratio between uh, this length and this length is the same thing as the ratio between this length and this length, meaning that these uh, two ratios are in proportion. Okay, so hopefully you understand some basic math like how to set up and solve a proportion, and that's what we're going to do right now. So here is our two uh, similar right triangles. 
So uh, the height of the, of the triangle, the, the proportion or the ratio of the height of the triangle, you see I have to kind of correct myself here and make sure that I'm using the correct term. So it's the ratio between the height and the, we'll call this the length. So the height to the length of the small triangle is uh, going to be 6 to x, and that is in proportion uh, to the ratio of the height and the length of the bigger triangles. That's going to be 9 over x. Now, uh, you got to be really careful here that we're talking about the height of these triangles. Okay, that is our numerators, and then the length is our denominators. But uh, they are in proportion. So in other words, this ratio is equal to this ratio, and we can set up what we call a proportion, which is two equal ratios. So uh, here is basically going to be the key to figuring out the problem. All right, so we have a proportion. 6 is to x as 9 is to x plus 4. So now it really comes down to your ability to solve this equation. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. But before we do that, I need you to do this, and that is to hit that subscribe button. You see, I got to kind of sneak that in because I definitely need your help to continue to grow my YouTube channel so I can help as many people as possible. You see, for me, as a math teacher, I'm happiest when I'm teaching uh, mathematics, and I'm uh, really, truly, you know, uh, happiest when I'm helping people learn math. And the more people I can help, the better, you know, uh, you know, I feel about myself. And, you know, these problems, I try to make uh, math uh, interesting. I, you know, I don't like to just do kind of like standard math problems. Now, this is a kind of a typical math problem, but I try to, you know, teach it in a way that people like and understand. And most importantly, I try to give uh, a lot of people out there that are struggling in math encouragement to not give up. So if you need help in mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. And if you want to know more about uh, similarity, congruency, kind of the geometry topics that we're talking about here, uh, two recommendations. One, you can uh, check out my full geometry course. You'll find the link to it in the description. Or my Math Skills Rebuilder course. This is an excellent course for those of you that have been away from math and you want to kind of relearn math, starting from the basics. In this course, I go through uh, basic arithmetic, algebra, a ton of geometry, and even some basic trigonometry and probability and statistics. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out this uh, proportion. And what we need to do here is use something called the cross product. This is how you solve proportions. So we have one fraction that's equal to another fraction. Uh, so this is, uh, by definition, a proportion. So we can cross multiply this way. This is called the cross product. So when you have a proportion, the cross products are equal. Now, one thing you have to be super uh, careful about here is when we set up pr uh, the proportion, notice in this triangle, the larger triangle, that the length is x plus 4. But anytime you have a sum or difference, uh, you want to put parentheses around it. Oftentimes, you won't have the parentheses, so put those in because if you don't, you can easily make an error. All right, so we have parentheses around our x plus 4. So now we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. So this is going to be 6 times x plus 4. So we're going to write it just like this with the parentheses, and then 9 times x is 9x. Okay, so we cleared the fractions. Now we just need to go ahead and do the algebra. So this is going to be 6 times x, or 6x, uh, and then 6 times 4 is 24, and that's equal to 9x. So now let's go ahead and move our variables to one side of the equation and our numbers to the other side. Now typically we like to put our variables on the left and our numbers on the right, something like, say, 2x is equal to 10, but you could also have 10 is equal to 2x if it's easier to take a step. Uh, so in other words, in this particular uh, situation, if I wanted to move my variable terms to the left, I'd have to move the 9x over here, but then I would have to move the number to the other side. So that is two steps, but uh, to make my life easier, I can just simply go, you know what, I'm just going to keep my variables on the right. So all I have to do is subtract 6x from both sides because we only have one number. So that's perfectly fine as well. And when we do that, we're going to end up with 24 is equal to 9x minus 6x, which, of course, is 3x. So that's just one step versus two steps. And now all we need to do is take this final step by dividing both sides of the equation by 3 to solve for x. And our final answer is x is equal to 8. 
Okay, so this problem is a good kind of reminder of how important algebra is in geometry. And that's why when you study geometry, like a full geometry course, you typically have to have already studied algebra. So if you're struggling with geometry, make sure you have strong algebra skills uh, because typically uh, if you're having a tough time in geometry, you probably didn't do so well in algebra, but all these things can be corrected. But uh, hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.